Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you all here for worship at Woodlawn today, especially our guests who are joining us. Our guest speaker today is our seminarian who was assigned to us as part of his early field training from the seminary, uh, Jake, Mr. Jacob, uh, uh, Caleb Jacob Gustafson. <laughs> Caleb Gustafson. Sorry about that, Caleb. Sorry about that, Caleb. Uh, this is the first time he's preaching in public. Uh, last night was his first time, uh, but we thank you for uh, sharing God's Word with us today, focused on the gospel, the blessings that we have because we are connected to Jesus, the true vine, we are the branches, and the fruit that we are to produce as, because of our connection to Christ. We're following the common service, and we start with our opening hymn verses from Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you. We glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as the choir sings.
first scripture lesson for the fifth Sunday of the Easter season is from the book of Acts. We read in chapter 8, beginning verse 26. We have here the account of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, man from Ethiopia, who now gets connected to that branch or that vine, Jesus Christ, through the gospel, in the word and through baptism. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is an isolated area. So he got up and went. And there was a man, an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was on his way home, sitting in his chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit told Philip, Go over there and stay close to that chariot. Philip ran up to it and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I, unless someone explains it to me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will talk about his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak. Starting with that very passage of scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. As they were traveling along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch asked, Look, here's water. What is there to prevent me from being baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they stepped out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. The eunuch did not see him anymore, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, found himself at Azotus. And as he went from place to place, he preached the gospel in all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of our God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 139b. We'll all join together in singing the refrains and the glory be to the Father at the end of the psalm. And the congregation sings the second half of each psalm verse. Psalm 139b. praise you, O Lord, for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you created my inmost being. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My frame was not hidden from you. I will praise you. ordained for me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. Were I to count them, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise you. Made. 
New Testament lesson from the first epistle of St. John. We read from chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. Here John implores us, or exhorts us as people of God to be fruitful branches by living for Christ through our faith that we display and through our good deeds following the commands of God. Dear children, let us love, not only with word or with our tongue, but also in action and truth. This is how we know that we are of the truth and how we will set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. We also receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. This, then, is his command, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remains in God and God in him. This is how we know that he remains in us. We know it from the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel lesson and also the basis of the sermon today from St. John chapter 15, beginning with the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus is here speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he's going to cut off. And he prunes every branch that does bear fruit so that it will bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I am going to remain in you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Likewise, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him is the one who bears much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you continue to bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The hymn of the day is hymn 283, Speak, O Savior, I am listening.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to direct your attention to today's gospel reading, especially verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him is the one who bears much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. The word of the Lord. If you have ever taken care of plants, you may know that it is difficult work to get just even one plant to grow. You will make sure that that plant has good soil that is full of nutrients. You'll make sure the plant has fertilizer. You'll make sure the plant has the correct amount of sunlight. And you'll observe the plant and see how it grows and see if it is healthy. But what if a branch falls off? Will that branch survive apart from the main plant? No, it probably will not. And the same thing is true for us if we don't stay connected to Jesus and remain in his word. And that is why Jesus says to us, remain in me, the vine. We hear Jesus call himself the vine multiple times in our gospel reading. And Jesus may have been prompted to use this example as he's walking out to the Mount of Olives on Thursday of Holy Week. Grapevines were common in Mediterranean regions, and they grew especially well in Israel because of the lack of water at certain times of the year. So the early Christians and the apostles would have understood the reference that Jesus made when he called himself the vine. And then Jesus continues and calls his apostles the branches. And Jesus is speaking to us today and calls us branches. And then in verse 3, Jesus says something wonderful and maybe a little mysterious. He says, you are already clean. Now, what does it mean that we are clean? Before we came to faith and before the Spirit worked faith in our hearts, we were dead in sin. We were dead branches. But then at our baptism, the water along with the word, the Spirit worked life in our hearts, spiritual life. Instantly, when the water was applied, we were cleansed. Otherwise, we would still be dead branches that are not connected to the vine. And Jesus talks about those branches that are not connected to the vine. In verse 2, he says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. How do we as humans produce fruit? Well, the Apostle Paul answers that question in his letter to the Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So the good fruit that we bear are our good works that grow up from faith. And people that do not produce good fruits are the unbelievers because faith has not been worked in their hearts. Again, Jesus says, he, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Who is this he that is cutting off the branches? 
In verse 1, Jesus calls God the Father, the gardener. And a gardener will look at a plant and see if it is healthy uh, based on if it's producing fruit or if it's green. So the farmer can look at a plant and see if it is thriving. And God does the same thing with us. He can look at us. He sees our faith and he sees the, the good fruits that our faith produce. And Jesus adds to the picture in verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. So there are final consequences to not remaining in Jesus. Jesus uses the imagery of fire multiple times in the Gospels. And when things are being gathered up and thrown into the fire, it is connected with Judgment Day. So Jesus is warning us that if we do not remain in him, the vine, we will face the final punishments in hell. But once a branch is cut off, it can't survive on its own. And Jesus says as much in verse 4, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. We may be tempted to think as we go throughout our life that I'll be fine. I, I don't need Jesus and his word. But that is not the case. We need some sort of life source. Just like a branch needs to be connected to the main plant, we need that life source. And if we are disconnected from that life source, we will die. And it won't just be physical death, but eternal death. So what do you connect yourself to? Do you connect yourself to your job, to money, or maybe to your favorite sports team? Think back on the last week. What took your focus away from Jesus and his word? It can be very easy to not stay in the word, to read the word daily. I know it's hard for myself to stay diligent in my study and reading of God's word because our lives are busy and we don't always have time for Jesus and his word. But remember what Jesus said in verse 3. You are already clean. And we are not clean because of something that we have done. We are clean because of Jesus and what he has done in his, in his words. And the Bible is God's word. And in the Bible, we find that Jesus goes to the cross willingly for each and every one of us. His blood has cleansed us from all of our guilt. And we can remember our baptism when the water was applied with the word. Our sins were washed clean. Maybe thinking of God's word in this way will help. God's word is like sap. Jesus is the vine, and he strengthens us branches through his word. So if God's word is like sap, then wouldn't we want to get all the sap that we could get? 
Because we don't want to be like the dead branches that are cut off and thrown into the fire. We want to be the branches that live and produce fruit. And if we stay in God's word regularly, we will receive that life-giving sap from Jesus. So we are already clean. But our life doesn't stop there. Because Jesus says that God the Father, the gardener, prunes us. Now what is, what is pruning for? It is a necessary thing to do for plants, as, and it's especially necessary for grapevines. The vine tender will go out in the spring after the last frost, and he'll cut away all the dead branches from last year. And he'll leave only just a, f- a few buds on each branch. And he does this because the vine can only support so many branches and so many buds. God the Father also prunes us. But he doesn't do it because Jesus can only support so many believers. He does it for our benefit, for our faith. But what does pruning look like in our life? It could be the the trials that are in a believer's life that strengthen faith. Just think of some people in the Bible who were tested and their faith grew. Abraham. He was told for so many years that he was going to have a son, and God made him wait for so many years. And when God finally gave Abraham a son, then God told him to go and sacrifice that son. Or David. He was chased all over the countryside by Saul, And in some of the Psalms, he says that he is surrounded by enemies on every side. Or the Apostle Paul. He faced persecution after persecution, and yet he did not fall away. He remained faithful, and he was there to encourage others and build others up. Peter tells us in his first epistle about facing trials, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So trials may come into our lives, but we, we can en- endure those trials because of the word of God. And then our faith will be worth more than gold. So God prunes us for our benefit. And since we are cleansed and pruned, we have a new relationship with Jesus. When we remain in Jesus, Jesus remains in us. And what a wonderful thing that that is. He lives and rules in our hearts right now. And Paul put it wonderfully in Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So it is by faith that Christ lives in all of us. At our baptism, 
faith was created in our hearts and Jesus lives in our hearts. When we come to the Lord's table for communion, we are united with Jesus in a special way. So you know that you are clean. So don't be like the dead branches that are cut off and thrown into the fire. Be like the branches that produce fruit. Remain in Jesus, the vine. Stay in the word. Make it a crucial part of your life, one that you cannot separate yourself from. Drink up all that wonderful sap that Jesus provides for us in his word and remain in Jesus the vine. Amen. Please stand as we sing the Create in Me. We include in our prayers today a prayer on behalf of Dan Hofer, David's brother, who's seriously ill, hospitalized here in Milwaukee. And we also pray for the seven young people who will be confirmed in our 1030 service today. Oh Lord, you are our maker, redeemer, and sanctifier. We, by being grafted onto Jesus Christ, the true vine in holy baptism and through the gospel, we come before you today hearts with hearts filled with gratitude and praise. Since we are now your chosen people in Christ, we look forward to the promised land of heavenly rest. Send us your Holy Spirit that he may strengthen our faith and strengthen that relationship we have with Christ. Help us to show that we are fruitful Christians by our love. May everything we say or do Show that we remain in Christ and that he remains in us. As branches of that true vine, Jesus, may we produce the kind of fruit that you expect of your people. And, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look with favor upon our brother in Christ, Dan Hofer, who's seriously ill. If it is your will, we ask you to spare him pain and suffering and give to him that wonderful healing power let that go to work and heal his body, if it is your will that he may soon recover. Although we don't always understand the reason for the sufferings that we have in this life, help us to see that you may be pruning us so that we live a life closer to you, a more productive and fruitful life. So more than ever, let Dan, help Dan with his faith's eyes, see the cross of his Savior and see the wonderful love displayed there and that that love is meant for him. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you began your good work in these young people who will be confirmed later today. You've blessed their training and instruction in your word so that not, they now look forward to their confirmation and to receiving your holy supper. We pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on their hearts and minds as they continue the study of your, your word throughout their lives so that they may truly love and fear you, confess their faith joyfully and boldly, and with their lips and with their lives glorify you, their faithful God and Lord. We ask all this through our Savior Jesus and join together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we further pray. Blessed Lord, you've given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 May be seated. We sing the closing verses of Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Greetings again to all of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it was good to have had you here for worship today. Be sure to read through all the items in your Woodlawn Weekly News. Just want to highlight one item, is that, and that is that we still need a, a, a few folks to volunteer to take care of a section of the church property, the, the bushes and shrubs and flower beds that we have. Um, there's a three or four spots still open. The uh, display, the, the uh, poster, uh, where you can sign up is on the table to the left as you exit the sanctuary. If you have any questions, you can see Pastor Wessler or me or Al. Where's Al? There's Al. Pink shirts. Can't miss them today. So if you have any questions about it, talk to Al. Um, and then finally, we also thank Caleb, uh, Mr. Gustafson, for his uh, message to us today. Wish him God's blessings on three more weeks of school and that he has a good summer. And we may see him, hopefully we'll see him a few more times yet this this spring, and uh, that will be back with us in the fall as part of his seminary training. God's blessings to you, then, for the rest of your week.